What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Sessa Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm gonna break down what's happening with the overall market moving forward and talk about some very important factors that will affect how we move, not to mention some new signals that are developing. But let me just mention that I am not a financial planner. Make sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link. If you deposit $100, you're guaranteed five free stocks. If you deposit 1000 bucks, you're guaranteed 15 And the offer ends very soon in just about 13 days. Anyways, for the market, I just want to mention that tomorrow morning, there's not really much data coming in. We actually have just a couple of Fed speakers. But it's going to be a very, very quiet data day that gives the market more leeway. Now, technicals are showing the market is dipping quite a bit. And this is also tracking Tesla down because we're losing a lot of momentum right now. And if you look at the trend on Tesla, we're turning a little bit more bearish. And the reason for this is because we're making lower highs. Our high from just last Thursday, so that's one week ago, was all the way over here around this 270 area. Then it went down to about 265. Then it went to about 258. Then as of recent, it went up to about 257 before it's coming back down. So in my opinion, Tesla is slowly starting to decline, especially if you look at the daily time frame. And there's a risk that we could, you know, rebound a little bit again and continue lower. We still are trying to hold the range we have. We'll be watching to see if we hold the support at uh, 247.5. And if we end up losing that, I'll be looking for a dip all the way down to even lower levels. So just to be very, very clear, Tesla is developing some weakness on the daily charts. And there's going to be a risk of us dipping down to even lower levels, like into the mid uh, 240s very, very soon. If we fail to hold structure in the 247 area, I do see a risk of that potentially happening. So volume is also slowing down for Tesla. I could be looking for it to eventually make its way down to these lows right here into the 245 area. And if we fail to get a decent close, that there's going to be a higher probability of that. So I want to give you guys a warning about that. It's not just because of Tesla, but also if you look at SPY, it's dumping really hard right now. Uh, the market's dumping. Uh, there was news that came out about how President Joe Biden might not actually continue his presidential campaign. Uh, he might have to exit. Uh, there's some news coming out that's saying that that's a possibility. Many different Democrats are saying that that's going to happen. So this is becoming a little bit concerning. The market obviously does not like uncertainty and it's continuing to dip. So SPY is at a critical level. If you guys look right here, it's very simple. This is very simple technical analysis. The daily is looking more bearish after getting this big gap down and a rejection. We have a bearish looking daily candlestick. Obviously, this is like really important. And then we also have this level right here. Very close to this 550 area. Notice how we have these two resistance levels right here on the left side. We had resistance right here. Then we have resistance right here. So that's going to become our next support and the next potential targets. We're basically there. We're very, very close to hitting that area. If we bounce off that level, we could be looking for a nice pushback up to 555. If we fail, if we end up failing to hold this 550 area right over here where my cursor is, this is going to be dipping even lower. And we have the risk to fill this imbalance here and go all the way down to 544. So you want to be very careful with SPY right now. We're barely holding the support. So I'll be watching this going into tomorrow. This is going to be a big test. And we are looking weak from a very, very strong technical standpoint. For NVIDIA, we're continuing to dip right here. It's actually trying to hold this 50 EMA, so this 116 area. We did touch this. I did call out how it might touch this. That's what ended up happening, and we're still kind of stuck now. So we're going to be looking at resistance at 120, and also right over here, we have gap resistance at 122. If that breaks, we have potential to fill the gap up here. And if we fail, if we end up losing 116, look for a bigger rug pull. So I'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case. As of right now, we're looking a little bit weak, but we're still seeing buyers trying to defend 116, so it's still kind of a range bound. For Bitcoin, lo and behold, it's coming down as you predicted. We're going to be looking for a test of 62,500 very, very soon. ES is dumping just like SPY. ES also lost its 20 EMA. Uh, it's also testing the previous um, resistance, which is becoming support at 5575. If we lose that area, the 5570 area, then we could be dipping all the way down to about 5,500 flat. So you want to be very careful with that coming out. For Tesla, like I said before, still looking kind of weak. Tesla is getting dragged down by the market, so be careful. It's not super. We can still kind of uh, trying to hold this range. But what I'm trying to say is that we're losing momentum and there's a risk of Tesla dipping lower because of how this market is performing and also because of what technicals are showing us as we're making lower highs consistently. So there is a risk of Tesla going down to the mid 240s if the market continues on this trend. So be very careful. The QQQ dipped quite a bit. It actually lost the support at 480. We called out 478s to watch for. If that broke, we'd be watching 476. So watch this 476 support area. If that fails us, we're going all the way down to 472. 
The resistance currently at 480. That's going to be a very critical level. But right now we look more bearish. We're favoring the downside and 472 looks a little bit more probable to me. For Apple, we just barely held 222. This is where our 20 EMA happens to be. If it loses this, we're going to be testing previous res resistance becoming support around 218. If that fails, we could be dipping all the way down to the imbalance at 212. If we hold this support at 218, we could try to rebound. But my gut tells me this is fa favoring downside. And that's looking a little bit more probable to me. For Supermicro, we're looking a little bit more bearish. We actually have a bearish looking trend right over here. There is, in my opinion, a risk of us dipping down towards uh, lower levels, such as like the 780s, <laughs> excuse me, the 780 area. It looks more bearish to me. If you look at the, <laughs> the trend, how it's getting rejections and such, excuse me, guys, and other factors like that. Even the IWM is coming down for a little bit of a dip. We have a lot of gaps to fill. Uh, could we come down to fill this gap towards 213? It's a possibility, but we'll be looking for a bounce later on. Uh, we need a follow through move tomorrow for confirmation. If we do get a follow through move lower and we end up losing 216, I think we're easily filling the gap to 212. For just a couple more, we have Coinbase. Coinbase got a big rejection. Make sure you watch the 50 EMA 228 as support. If that fails us, we're going to fill this gap down to 217. If we hold this, we could try to rebound back up to about 236. Overall, we're looking more bearish, but watch 220, 228 as key supports. We'll see if that holds or not. Um, Amazon's looking a little bit more bearish. Going to be looking for a dip all the way down here towards, you know, I think we, we could get closer to about 180. It's still looking pretty weak. This is what's dragging the QQQ down as well. Meta, of all things, is trying to rebound a little bit. If we could try to get back above 480, I think we fill the gap up to about 490. If we fail to break 480 on this test, we could continue lower. So it's trying to rebound. We're seeing some life in Meta, but it hasn't broken key resistance yet. Microsoft tried to rebound only to reject. We're going to be watching the close. Do we close above 439.5 or not? If we close below that, there's going to be a risk of even more downside. I remember we called out this 434 level. Uh, because that's previous resistance. That's where Microsoft is trying to hold. Watch 434 as well as critical support. If we lose that, there's going to be a bigger dump all the way down to about 425. So be careful on Microsoft. It is looking a little bit more bearish, but it hasn't lost key support yet. Google's also just barely uh, shuffling around our 50 EMA. If we lose this and start dipping below this tomorrow, I think we're easily going to be dipping to 175. If we hold this, we're going back up to 180, but I see a risk of downside as a stronger possibility. So that being said, guys, I want to thank you all so much for listening. The market is showing weakness, uh, but just know that SPY and some others have not lost critical uh, support yet. Tesla is starting to look like it's weakening a little bit. So just if you look at this trend for the last couple of days, and I see a little bit of a risk that I could dip a little bit lower, uh, but that also depends on how we end up closing and other factors like that. Even if we do dip a little bit, we could still see Tesla try to rebound because it's being held up by some nice supports. But I do want to give you guys at least a warning about this, just to be open-minded to the possibility of some downside. If we start losing some key supports, the daily chart is, is looking a little bit more lackluster to me. Anyways, um, that's it for this one. I want to thank you for listening. I'll be back in just a couple of hours for one final update of the day. Uh, take care, guys, and peace out.